Hello everyone, this is Matthew Brand, and last time I talked about what the biggest problem in the church was, and that was that the community is no longer together, they're not a close family anymore, now it's more like everybody's separated, the community is still there, but they're sparse, they don't talk to each other, there's not a close family function of it. So what happened? That's what I want. I really want to talk about why that became. Now the short answer is because it's unprofitable. I'm not saying all churches are greedy. I know that's a typical like, hey, all churches are greedy. All they want is money. And if it's not profitable anymore, they just get rid of it. No, I think it's more of like it was a gradual, uh, it became unprofitable. So they shifted their focus and the community became uh, not less of a focus, but they altered the way they developed it. So before, uh, it would be like a guy, let's say his name was Jake. He came to church. He met, you know, with the bishop or uh, what do they call it, deacon something, reverend. They would introduce you to, let's say, somebody's grandson. Like, hey, this, you know the lady, old lady who gave you a piece of candy? This is her grandson. He comes to church every now and then. Maybe you guys get to know each other. And then you guys become friends. And then you, as you continue to go to church, you meet each other. But now, lately, you don't have that because now you meet, you know, Steve, who's being a well-groomed member of the church. He's real solid in the church, and he's going to suck you in and make sure you've been attending, or he just wants to check up on you every now and then. But he wants to make sure you're serious, that's what they call it, serious about going to church, before they put a lot of time and effort into bringing you into their community of members. Now, why is it that this happened is because... The membership dwindled down. You know, in two, I want to say around 2005, you, people really uh, stopped talking to each other. They didn't, you know, the social media picked up. And as the years to follow, people didn't talk to each other as much. And the main incentive of going to church, because you could hear and listen to sermons online, uh, instead of being going to church to listen to a sermon and get your, you know, weekly uh, fuel of motivation and and Christian understanding and, and, and I guess clarification on life. You can get that day to day on, you know, on iTunes or on YouTube or something. You can get that from other sources and sometimes in a better format because with millions to choose from, the, the most popular vote would win. So not to say that the churches are bad or unnecessary, but the main purpose of going to church was to get community but once you get that you don't go anymore because you could get community let's say if you met the mic you can get the community outside of the church but if you want to see steve you know if you meet steve and steve's your main compadre at church he steve's going to stop seeing you if you stop going to church because he's a major member of the church so you have these two separate options they want you to be well engraved and well social and well put into church to do that problem is people work on sundays now they work on you know the times that people go to church and they don't alter their entire lives just to make sure they can attend church but if church alter their format to make sure that they could you know bring people community that would be the best option now a lot of churches they have multiple meeting times um and the best way to service this in my opinion the, the best solution would be to take um, the sermon and make it more interactive. So stop what you're doing in the middle of it and gather people together and have them talk to one another, you know, discuss a certain, uh, uh, I should say, topic, you know, or, you know, events, you know, how has this affected your life? You know, have them bring up politics and religion in a church, which is supposed to be about, religion maybe not so much politics but it is a, a point of it the reason i say that people don't do this as much as one it doesn't fit the modern mega church format so most churches that start off they're branches of a much larger corporation or they're you know they're a mega church themselves or something they're planet planet seed of a mega church itself the reason they do these in this format is because they can reach multiple people. So now you can do a YouTube sermon or you can do a, a podcast sermon. And even though you're a small church, you can branch out to more and more people and make more money that way, get more donations in that sense. If you do a more interactive sermon, uh, you're going to have an issue where a lot of people, they don't, they're not going to get 
the interaction just by you know listening in so every now and then you'll have somebody you know in church turn to each other and say hey or you have five to 15 seconds before the sermon where you get to shake hands with someone you never met that's fine but that's not real interaction and also they're scared of people you know offending each other getting into it over uh opinions but that's something you're just going to have to put in the risk because you have to get it to where men and women can talk to one another and not just have uh women's you know little classes for women on certain days and then men's retreats on other days and then you know do little vacations a few times a year you have to have real community in the church because if the father the pastor of the church is not like the father and a matri and his wife is not like the matriarch of the church and then you don't have the the elders or deacons or reverends being like the uncles what you get is a situation where the father doesn't know what's going on with the kids or the mother doesn't know what's going on with the kids and it's not to be all you know controlling and into their business but if the kids want you know if they're having an issue and they're waiting for you to reach out and you don't even know what's going on or you don't have the time to pay attention then you have a messed up format and that's how you get kids with machine guns and you know all these problems and on drugs and all this stuff when it doesn't have to be that way uh that's what the church is for to have a community for that accountability and that but most importantly that love to care and, and give the people what they need you know the thing to feed their soul uh, which is that community and the reason they're not giving it because they want to make sure you're engraved in the church before that but i believe wholeheartedly if they service did that to them on a consistent basis, you know, made it more of an, you know, a consistent event, uh, maybe make it separate from the actual church service or actual time where they do the rec recording for the one thing and then have the interactive church service at a different time. That way they know who wants to come up and they know, you know, who wants to do a certain thing and, you know, maybe isolate that one dude, you know, who's always being abrasive away from the other people because you have to have that in this modern day and age that's that's just what people need because this this world is falling and if you don't develop that community it's not going to grow if you don't develop it in the first place you can't just you know wait until people get become main members of the church to really just have them involved that's the wrong way to go about it do you have to check people every now and then? It's fine. You know, have people join up together and if, um, and then like link them up later, but don't, you know, try to keep every single bit of community outside the church and only with main members and only in small groups that, are, that meet outside the church at someone's house. Just need to stop leaving it up to the other people to do that because that means your church has gotten too big and it's, it's I'm not saying big churches are a bad thing and I'm not saying churches aren't supposed to grow to that big but it's gotten too big for you to manage in an efficient manner if you have to have the members doing that type of work the pastors should you know need to stop what they're doing walk around and get people involved and get to know people much more actively if that's the situation that's going on that's why you have elders and deacons and reverends and whatever else is at the church not just five or eight different pastors as you so call it and then no uh you know branching down hierarchy anyway that's my opinion if you like it please like and subscribe if you have something else you think would be better or think would be different please leave a comment leave a message uh you know if you just want to bash you know do whatever do whatever that is but Please feel free to, you know, develop this issue because this is a very, very important thing that needs to be discussed and brought up that is not being brought up enough. So anyway, thank you for tuning in. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll check you later.